So if you're like me, you've been playing this season quite a bit and you, overall you're just sort of sick of using a Starfire build or a Sunbracer build or a Controverse Hold Void build. Obviously, Arc builds are not meant for this season. The seasonal artifacts are sort of forcing us to use more of a Void or a Solar build with the grenades. And obviously the Starfire Protocol and the Sunbracer build on Warlocks are just two of the best builds that you can do right now. You just can't beat them. However, if you're just sort of sick of using them and you want to try something different, this arc build is very fun and it is super powerful and it is great in that mid game. However, once you get to that end game, you're probably going to want to switch back to your Starfire and Sunbrazer build purely because they are just so strong right now. But you never know, they might nerf these builds and then this arc build might take a step forward. Better yet, in the future seasons, they might want us to use arc again. So give this one a try. Let's jump straight into this build. Whether you want to use Storm Trends or Chaos Reach, it's completely up to you. If you want to be more ad clear focused or you feel like you could do a little bit more damage to mages, you can go with Chaos Reach. Me personally, I really like Storm Trends, so I'm going to keep that on. For the abilities, we're going to want to be using the Healing Rift, Burst Glide, Chain Lightning, and the Pulse Grenades. Now, as of Lightfall, the Pulse Grenades got about a 20% damage boost, so this is going to be your best grenade out of all of these to offer. The Storm Grenade was my previous choice, but this one actually got nerfed pretty heavily. So Pulse Grenade is going to be your best option here. Now, moving on to the aspects, I like to use Arc Soul and Electrostatic Mind. Both of these work very well in conjunction with each other. Now, the Arc Souls are very underrated in Destiny. If you can get two or three teammates using the Arc Soul and they all have one up, these things do some massive amount of damage and they can almost clear a whole room of ads that you don't even know are there. When you're not looking, they'll just shoot things and they'll just be awesome. So you won't even know they're there, but they'll be doing work. The way these works is when you put down your rift, anyone that runs through that rift, they will then pick up a arc soul and it will just hover next to their character for a specific amount of time. On top of this, if you're amplified, these arc souls have an increased fire rate, which makes them even better. The easiest way to get amplified is to use electrostatic mind. Basically using anything in this kit will make you amplified, but basically defeating targets with arc abilities or defeating jolted or blinded targets creates an ionic trace. And then and collecting these Ionic Traces will make you Amplified. So just doing anything with this build arc-wise will create an Ionic Trace. Once you pick up that trace, you will then become Amplified. Now, Ionic Traces are basically little balls of light on the ground. They will travel towards you. They will automatically be picked up by your character. You don't even have to worry about getting them. They will automatically track towards you. So you will just get them and you will be Amplified 24-7. Now, moving on to the Fragments, I like to use the Spark of Amplitude. Basically, once you're Amplified, which is going to be all the time, defeating targets will create lots of Orbs of Power. And this is absurd. I'm talking Orbs of Power off every single kill. Orbs will be falling out of your ass like nothing has ever seen before. They'll be everywhere. You pick them up, heaps of armor charge, etc. Spark of Shock. So when you use these Arc Grenades, obviously they jolt targets. That jolt just spreads everywhere. Everything gets zapped and lightninged. Heaps of damage for this. The only downside of this is you lose 10 discipline, but that's okay because we're going to get infinite arc abilities anyway. Third one, defeating a jolted target creates an ionic trace. So like I said before, when you throw a grenade, they're going to jolt the targets. Once that target dies, you're then going to create an ionic trace, which will then automatically track to you, making you amplified. And finally, the spark of magnitude. Basically, when you use your pulse grenade, it's just going to make it last longer and it will have an extended duration, meaning more damage, more jolts, more Ionic Traces. Now, moving on to the loadout. Primary weapon is completely up to you, but the main killer of this is going to be the Icolos SMG, specifically with Vault Shot. I like to use Feeding Frenzy and Vault Shot. This is the God Roll Icolos SMG. I assume most Guardians will have this gun. If you don't have it, basically any Icolos SMG that has Vault Shot is going to be your friend. Or better yet, just any ARC submachine gun is going to be your best friend here. If you're more of a fusion rifle kind of guy, you can use the Delicate Tomb. This was a exotic weapon from the previous seasons. This one is specifically made for this build. As you can see, final blows with this weapon have a chance to generate some ionic traces. Powerful foes and opposing guardians will always generate an ionic trace. So this gun was literally made for this build, but because of the new mods that we will be using, you don't even really need to use this. The Icolos SMG with Vault Shot is just completely fine. But if you're feeling like you're not getting enough, you can put on the Delicate Tomb. Now for the Heavy, I like to just stay fully Arc. So I like to use the Hothead. This is one of my favorite weapons this season. I've got a really good roll, so I'm going to use the Hothead. Otherwise, you can use an Arc LMG. What I like to sometimes do is swap the Wither Horde out for a succession. And then you can run the Thunderlord. Thunderlord is very good this season. This works very well. But obviously, your main weapon is going to be the Icolos SMG. So in the Kinetic and the Heavy slot, you can basically use whatever you want. I like to use these as spots to help kill bosses and Heavy Mages. So things like Thunderlord, Hothead head succession with a horde 
these things are just going to help you kill those higher health enemies. Now, the main exotic that's going to be working around this build is the Fallen Sunstar Helmet. Basically, the way this one works is Ionic Traces that you create move faster and grant additional ability energy. Now, if you have any allies around you, as you can see, it also will give them ability energy when you collect those Ionic Traces. So overall, this is a support and a personal utility item. If you're playing solo, you're going to create Ionic Traces and just have heaps of ability energy. And then if you're playing with friends, once you pick up those Ionic Traces, you're also going to help them get their abilities faster. So this is a great helmet over. Overall. Now on the gloves, I like to run Grenade Kickstart and Melee Kickstart along with Firepower. Basically Firepower, as you can see when you get Grenade Final Blows, you're going to be creating plenty of orbs of power. Basically I like to use Grenade Kickstart, so when you throw that grenade out, it's just going to give you a large chunk of energy back for that grenade. And basically this works the same with the Melee. Once you use that Melee, it's going to give you a large chunk back but it's going to use your armor charges in return. However, this is not going to be a problem because in the bond slot, we're going to be using utility kickstart. And like I said before, we're going to be creating so many orbs that we're just going to have max armor charge. And once we throw these grenades and melees, it's just going to give us those abilities back super fast. As for the stats wise, I like to try and get as much discipline and recovery as possible. Resilience is very good as well. So I'd try and get 100 recub and 100 discipline and then get your resilience as high as possible focusing on discipline but we want to have that grenade cooldown as small as possible so moving on to the chest armor i like to use charged up if you don't want to use this you can use any of the resistance mods depending on what activity you're doing but and i like arc reserves because we're going to be going with full arc weapons in this loadout but like i said if you don't feel like you need this many stacks which you probably don't you could probably chuck on something like arc resistance and harmonic resistance just anything up to you so moving on to the boots this is going to be our bread and butter of the build Basically, because we're going to be creating plenty of orbs of power, like I stated before, with the Spark of Amplitude. As I said, once we amplify, we're going to create plenty of orbs of power. This is where the bread and butter of this build is going to come. There's going to be so many orbs around that you're just going to be constantly generating. So once again, I like to use Invigorations. So when you pick up those orbs of power, it reduces your melee. Innovation, when you pick up those orbs of power, it reduces your grenade cooldown. And Absolution. When you pick up orbs, it's going to reduce all of your cooldowns. So just anytime you run over orbs, it's going to be reducing all of your cooldowns, making them 100% uptime, which is awesome. Finally, on the bond, this is kind of up to you. I like to use double bomber. So when you use your class ability, it reduces your grenade cooldown. This is awesome. It gives you a good chunk with double bomber. And then utility kickstart, obviously, to combine all those armor charges to work with the gauntlets. So heaps of orbs of power is going to mean heaps of armor charges. And that way, every time you use your grenade or your melee, it's just going to give you a huge chunk of energy back thanks to these two mods here on the arms. Now, as you can see from all this gameplay you've been seeing throughout the video, it's basically just 100% uptime on all of your grenades and abilities. Basically, the rotation you want to do is put down a rear throw a grenade, use your melee, use your Icolos SMG to proc vault shot, and then just keep carrying on from there. That's basically the whole rotation. You won't stuff it up. Alongside of this, your arc soul is going to be next to you, killing things, creating ionic traces, creating orbs of power, making you amplified. And basically, that's just the whole rotation. As you can see, it's just 100% uptime on grenades and melees. So you have infinite grenades, infinite class abilities. As you can see from this footage, I was down on the EDZ and my frames were dropping to 60 and 50 just because of all the orbs, ionic traces, grenade spam, and ability spam. This was just ridiculous. It was dropping my frames down to 60. I usually get 140 frames with Destiny and it was halving that with no problem just because of all the ability spam. If you feel like you are losing a bit of health and you're finding it hard to survive, you can swap some of the boot mods from reducing cooldowns to when you pick up orbs of power, it's going to give you a good chunk of health back. These also work very well together. It just means you'll just have a little bit less downtime on your grenades and melees. But if you're surviving more, that's completely okay. It's very much personal preference. Basically, guys, that's all I have for you. So give this one a try. Like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you guys later.